The ASP's 1990 World Tour Odyssey begins in the United States, specifically Santa Cruz, California, and the O'Neill Coldwater Classic. Held in the icy waters of Steamer Lane, the Coldwater Classic lives up to its name in every respect but one. The surfing is red hot. Steamer Lane obligingly offers up its best and most challenging waves for the event, and stylish, radical, searing performances result. Gary Elkerton slashes and shreds his way through the quarter and semifinals, fresh and ready after his 1989 Triple Crown Championship in Hawaii. Rob Bain with a successful combination of style, smarts, and skill. And the re-emergence of the enigmatic yet ever-popular Tom Curran. Back on the tour after a year of semi-retirement, surfing with renewed intensity. At the end of the final day, it's Elkerton and Curran in the final heat. And the last time these two met in a main event final was at the 1988 OP Pro. Curran emerging as the victor in a hard-fought duel. Today, once again, both surfers at the top of their game paddling for this first wave. It looks like Elkerton, he'll draw first blood, sets up. Plenty of speed, good snap right underneath the breaking curl. And now the wave backs off a little bit. A mini re-entry and another rebound off the white water, but a big move out the back. And the crowd comes alive, nearly 30,000 people. Curran's first wave, beautiful roundhouse snap on the open face. A nearly vertical move off the top. Another roundhouse. Ideal conditions here at Steamer Lane, Santa Cruz, California. Current three good combination moves. And a fourth move. And yet another fifth move. Tommy Curran with a high scoring wave here. A panel of five international judges are watching closely, looking for the most radical controlled maneuvers in the critical section of the wave with speed and power throughout. And Tommy Curran did just that. The crowd loves it. Let's take a look at Gary Alkerson's opening wave. 18.5, and a majority of those points given for this move. A big snap layback under the lip. Tommy Kern, on the other hand. Five combination moves. There's the first big roundhouse cutback. We continue with the men's final. Here's Tommy Kern's second wave. And it is a solid six-foot wave. Kern with a big move underneath the breaking curl. A second combination move, plenty of speed. He gets out on the shoulder and brings it back into the white water. And a third time as well, Tommy Curran out of here is Gary Elkerton's third wave. Gary Elkerton finishing sixth in the world last year. He surfed in 21 of 25 events. On the other hand, Tommy Curran only surfed in six events. And earlier this year on ESPN, you saw Gary Elkerton surf the Bonsai Pipeline and win that coveted event. Right now, great combination moves for Elkerton. Plenty of speed and power throughout. And working in the open face and bringing it back into the white water. No doubt, Elkerton's highest scoring wave, his third wave of the heat. Elkerton from Australia, now living full-time in Lackenau, France, paddles back into the lineup with added enthusiasm after that great wave. Big open face, beautiful roundhouse snapback. And out the back, quarter offshore wind holding up this wave the crowd comes to life Tommy Kern his third scoring wave two big moves big snap off the top nearly vertical and Tommy Curran, who finished 55th in the world last year, surfing only 6 of 25 events, looks like he's ripe for the world championship. A former two-time world champion, Tommy Curran paddles back out. Earlier this afternoon, we saw the finals of the O'Neill Pepsi Women's Classic, and it was a clash of the Titans, two arch rivals from Flagler Beach, Florida. Frida Zamba, a four-time world champion, met her arch rival of many years, Pam Burridge from Newport, Australia. Pam Burridge, ranked number two in the world, in conditions that had dropped considerably with the change of the tide. She found little to work with on the ways that she selected. Yet it was Frida Zamba's fluid, athletic style of surfing and her familiarity with smaller waves that gave her an advantage she was able to capitalize on, even though this was her first time surfing steamer lane. Pam Burridge, making the best of less than desirable conditions, gave it everything she had and was able to squeeze some nice carving cutbacks on the small waves, but not much else. Her frustration was apparent. 
Frida Zamba, on the other hand, was able to pick off the best waves of the heat and emerged as the new Coldwater Classic Women's Champion. She spoke with our Mark Fu. Okay, so what was your specific training program for this event? Obviously, whatever it was, it was the right one. Well, I tell you, I've never seen the setup here, and I never surfed this kind of a wave, so we didn't really know what to expect. Um, my coach was pretty much trying to put me in the right lineup because the waves were really shifty, so basically I've just been working on my surf and you know, trying to concentrate on just getting snappy maneuvers right in the hook because that seemed to be scoring the highest. Okay, it's been a while now since you've been, you know, back in the winter circle. How does it feel? Feels excellent. Very good. Stoked. Congratulations, Frida. Thank you. Frida Zamba, the only four-time women's world champion coming out of semi-retirement and returning to championship form here in Santa Cruz, California. Meanwhile, the men's final continues. Gary Elkerton making his way out to the far side of Lighthouse Point. A big third wave for him. A big snap off the top. And a snap off the white water. A little rebound now. Smooth re-entry. The wave takes shape now to the inside. Gary Elkerton, the last two months, he has spent much of the time snowboarding in the Pyrenees and the French Alps. Now he's on his surfboard and is carving some beautiful moves, a fantastic floating re-entry. And out the back, Pro Surfing's winning a surfer, 24 ASP Grand Prix wins under his belt, Tommy Curran, his fourth wave. And another big move, a roundhouse cut back up into the cascading lip. And it crashes down on Curran getting covered up. Now working the open face, plenty of speed. Big roundhouse cutbacks, re-entries into the whitewater. Tommy Curran has won nine vehicles in his incredible career, over $300,000 in prize money. And Tommy Curran points, and Elkerton scoring big points on this one wave. Incredible floating re-entry, a total score of 27.5, and a 24-point ride for Tommy Curran's fourth wave, a re-entry cover-up right there. And his down-the-line moves underneath the curl and big roundhouse cutbacks has Tommy Curran in the lead of the ASP World Tour. Here's Gary Elkerton, his fifth scoring wave. Sets up plenty of speed, big off the bottom, and goes down after that near vertical re-entry. In the last two years, he's competed in 18 events, has won four. And right now, the hunter, Tommy Curran, senses the kill. A big move, near vertical off the top. Trying to capitalize on his lead right now. Three great combination moves, beautiful roundhouse cutbacks. And the crowd loves every move Tommy Curran does, and the judges as well. Near flawless. Tommy Curran coming all the way through the trials. Tommy Curran has been surfing since the international trials, which begin on Tuesday, and today is Sunday. His ninth heat. Out the back, time running out. The last wave for Gary Elkerton, and not much of a wave, a mushy wave with no open face. The wave not cooperating, and Gary Elkerton just pulls out. Time is up. For this, the finals of the $135,000 O'Neill Pepsi Coldwater Classic. When the chilly waters of Steamer Lane have been turned to boiling by the awesome display of surfing, but in the end, it's two-time world champion Tom Curran who captures the prize and serves notice to the surfing world that he is indeed back and in top form. But the odyssey has only just begun. Next, it's on to Queensland, Australia's beautiful Gold Coast for the first leg in the three-event series known as the Grand Slam, the Bundaberg Surf Masters held in the famed barrels of Burley Heads. Surfing in conditions resulting from stormy weather and heavy rains, the pros take refuge inside the famed Burley Barrels, emerging now and again to slash the top or to free fall through the churning whitewater. And amazingly, the final features another current Elkerton confrontation marred from the outset by an interference call going against Elkerton. Beautiful wave, great positioning, and a magnificent burly barrel, and a good snap re-entry, and that is going to be a high-scoring wave for Tom Curran. Looking at that one more time, 
on his speed, perfect positioning, grabs the rail with his left hand, stays in tight and fast and tucks and gets a 25 point wave. Here's Gary Elkerton now. Elkerton drives down the line, what a snap off the top. And he drops his hand in the water, kind of a layback to recovery. Another good combination move. And a good wave for Elkerton. Here's Tom Curran now. His third wave, it takes shape down the line. Another snap for him. Picks up speed. Tucks right underneath the lip. Then a re-entry. And Curran can do no wrong right now. Tommy Curran currently leading the world tour with moves like this, scoring the big points, good snap off the top, not much of a wave, but scoring the big points. Elkerton, same thing, and in fact a recovery for Curran with a big move out the back. And a barrel to boot. Curran great down the line surfing. And a mini combination, Tom Curran his fourth scoring wave to win this right now, but it's not over. Tom Kern with beautiful surfing down the line, a mini cover-up, repositions himself, precise surfing for Tom Kern. Let's take a look back at the women's finals, which took place yesterday between Lisa Anderson of Florida and Australia's Pam Burridge. Burridge, a 25-year-old veteran, has been a four-time runner-up to the women's world title, coming off yet another second-place finish at the Coldwater Classic. The second finalist, Lisa Anderson, a three-year pro from Ormond Beach, Florida, has never had a career victory. But it was her day Saturday. She had tough competition in the likes of Pam Burridge. Burridge versus Lisa Anderson. Burridge from New South Wales, Australia. Happy to be surfing once again in the home waters. Got in some big moves on the open faces. Her surfing was relaxed and in control. Floridian Lisa Anderson, also in control, surfed with style and speed and a generous helping of high scoring maneuvers. In round number one, Lisa Anderson defeated Kathy Newman in the quarterfinals. She defeated the world champion Wendy Botha. Then in the semifinals, Australian Pauline Mentor. The appreciative surfing fans loved watching the aggressive surfing displayed by both competitors. But in the end, capitalizing on the smaller wave conditions and the higher scoring waves gave Lisa Anderson her first pro victory and a first place check for $8,000. Final result, Anderson 78.3 to Pam Burridge 77.3. Congratulations to women's champion Lisa Anderson from Ormond Beach, Florida, her first ASP career victory. And we are back to the men's finals. Tom Curran versus Gary Elkerton. It is Elkerton now with his fourth wave. But remember, he will only be scored on three waves, so he is behind the eight ball right now, and he's going to pull off seemingly impossible moves, trying for anything. Good cover-up. Can he come out? He comes out! Somewhat anticlimactic right now. It's going to be tough to overcome a one-wave deficit. He has spotted to Tom Kern with that wave interference. Nonetheless, he tries the impossible. Take a look at this. 26 and a half points. A casual cover-up. He pulls into the barrel, and you say, no way. And he pulls out perfectly. And he paddles back over to the point where Tom Kern is in position for his next wave. Kern's fifth wave. Lots of chop on it. Good section now. And he gets in the barrel. Answers right back. Tom Curran. It snaps off the top. Curran is not taking anything for granted. He continues to surf like he is behind. That's his final wave. A score of 25.2 points. And the crowd on the bluffs are amazed at Tom Curran's performance. He pulls into the barrel. Great positioning. Maintains the speed, pulls out 25.2 points and a good snap Rio to finish that one off. Here's Elkerton's final wave. 
and a beautiful stalling floating re-entry continues down the line another big re-entry and if it wasn't for that paddling interference this would have been an incredible heat but the wave tallies right now Tom Curran scored on four Gary Elkerton scored on three look at Elkerton's final wave 23 and a half points when the smoke on the water has cleared Tom Curran has captured his second consecutive tour victory but the odyssey continues southward to the state of Victoria the second Grand Slam event the Rip Curl Coca-Cola Bells Beach Easter Classic. Rincon Point, the inside bowl, the cliffs of Bells Beach, the familiar spots, the familiar names, and conditions worthy of an inspired battle. The crowd is enthusiastic. The surfing is awesome. And when it all comes down to the final, Tom Curran's incredible winning streak remains unbroken, with Australia's own Dave McCauley hoping to smash it to pieces. And on the outside, taking off at the Rencon Point area, his first wave, Dave McCauley. McCauley's backside attack, the wave closes out, and it catches him at the bowl, 18.5, a solid opening wave. Now Tom Kern, his first wave, a very casual takeoff, good snap off the top, a second combination move. He sets up with his bottom turn, goes to the top, beautiful roundhouse turn now, speed down the line. As the wave takes shape over the inside reef, the rock reef, he picks up speed. A beautiful long wave for Tom Kern. Big snap off the top. And he goes down and not happy with that. But the judges award him 23 points. Kern with a beautiful down the line wave. Here's McCauley now, his second wave. Big vertical move off the top. This wave really not, not offering much for McCauley. He makes it around the next section, gets a second big move. Now it takes shape to the inside. McCauley with three good moves. And four good moves on a way that didn't look like it was going to offer much. McCauley gets a combination, paddles back out. And as he does, he sees Tom Curran. Curran way on the outside. Curran with a couple of big snaps off the top now. Driving towards the bowl. The mushy wave now. He can cut back and forward trying to pick up the, the most powerful section of the wave. There's a good section. Big snapping turn. And Tom Kern, on a predominantly right-handed wave, cuts back towards Rencon Point and gets a couple of good moves going left. Big snap off the top. Tom's second wave scores 21 and a half points. Dave McCauley's second wave with big moves like this, 19 points. Our finalists paddle back out into the lineup, and we have a break in the action. Let's take a look at highlights of the women's championship. It was red-hot Lisa Anderson, 21 years old, out of Ormond Beach, Florida, coming off a big win at the Bundaberg Surf Masters, up against Kim Merrick, the 26-year-old out of Santa Barbara, California. Kim, a former world champion, has this spot dialed in, but Lisa Anderson was on a roll. 24 points for this wave. And 24 points for this wave. In a good two-meter swell of bells, Anderson pulled off a series of difficult whitewater floaters and big re-entries and wraparounds. She flipped by Kim Merrick with a score of 111.5 to 98. So what that means is the 1990 Quick Women's Classic winner, Lisa Anderson. Lisa Anderson, the former U.S. Amateur Girls Champion, now moves into second place on the world tour with back-to-back -to -back wins. 
Once again, we continue with the finals here. The Bell Beach Surfing Classic, an event that started back in 1962. Tom Curran versus Dave McCauley. And McCauley on his third wave while we were away. Let's take a look. A 22-point ride. He is back in the hunt. And McCauley pulls closer to Tom Curran. Tom Curran out the back right now. His third scoring wave. When you look like him, there's not much to Curran generating speed with his rail-to-rail -rail transitions. Beautiful roundhouse cutback. And looking down the line, setting up for his big moves. The 1982 Pro Rookie of the Year. Then on in 1985 and 86, winning the World Championship, Tom Curran. A big snap as the wave closes out. And Tom Curran happy about that wave. As he paddles back out, he's going to be able to see Dave McCauley now, his fourth wave. McCauley way out on the point. And hopping, weaving back and forth. Wave fading now. Now it's taking shape on the inside. From Rencon Point, trying to make it over to the bowl. Another one. He's a machine. McCauley with a non-stop series of moves off the white water. The wave closes out. And McCauley's got a long paddle back out into the lineup. Looking at that, 20.3. Good high-scoring wave for Dave McCauley. Tom Kern's third wave, 24 points out of a possible 30. Here's Tom Kern now. Tom's fourth wave. Beautiful, precise turns here in the afternoon conditions of Bells Beach. From Rencon Point, over into the bowl. Here comes Tom Kern generating speed and then burning it off with a beautiful roundhouse cut back, back into the power section of the wave. Over the inside reef, another snap. Tom just about catches a rail and goes down. And Curran pulls out. Tom Curran, his fourth wave, 20.3. He's got a quick paddle out for a final wave. Looking at Curran's big roundhouse snap. Drops his leg down, lays his right arm in. A beautiful turn. With time winding down, here's Dave McCauley. McCauley with a good snap. Pops his fins, actually slides his tail around. And McCauley's got a great lineup in front of And the wave really picks up a lot of power. Big Rio, big snap re-entry. And the wave closes out, and he's right on the beach. Tom Curran out the back at Rencon Point. Curran now, waiting for the wave to take shape. Time winding down. The former world amateur junior champion. Then two years later, became the world amateur champion, then turned pro that same year. This is going to be a good wave. And since then, he has become the winningest surfer in professional history. And looking for his third consecutive win in three events thus far this year. Tom Curran, big snap. And Curran with a great closing wave. 29 years of Bells Beach Easter Classics, and after today, three of those titles would belong to this man. The Odyssey would continue, but the current street would not. Next, it's north into New South Wales, the Sydney area, North Narrabeen Beach, and the Coca-Cola Surf Classic, Grand Slam Series event number three. Tom Curran is taken out of the fight in the early rounds by Brazil's Fabio Gouveia. The streak is ended, but now the battle is joined by different faces, each seeking his own prize, his own victory. Australia's Robbie Page typifies the determined, optimistic competitor after his victory in quarterfinal number one. Come off a heavy injury, you know. I touched me vertebrae 18 months ago, and then about eight months ago, I tore the ligament in my knee, and it's been really hard. You know, people saying he's all down and out, but it's hard to compete with injuries. But I'm getting over my injuries, and I'm getting back into it. So, it's got all my friends here and my shaper, and I'm staying with Shane Oran. Good energy. The energy is good. 
and the day is beautiful as 15,000 avid spectators watch the great surfing demonstration taking place at North Narrabeen Beach. Locals, some young hopefuls, others battle-scarred veterans, rise to the top as the heats progress. In the thick of the fight, veteran Australian pro Rob Bain describes the intensity of the competition in his quarterfinal heat against young lion Shane Powell. Yeah, there is a bit of a disadvantage, like uh, for guys that have been seated for a long time, because the young guys, they come through, they've got nothing to lose, and they just go for broke. And I don't know, for me, it was only a few years ago I was in the trials, so I still got that feel that he's got, so I'm still as hungry as him, I think. The quarterfinal heats witnessed the methodical elimination of all non-Australian competitors as the determined Aussies battle to the forefront in each matchup. Quarterfinal heat number three, Tahiti's Batea David, despite an inspired performance of his own, is the first to fall to a determined, highly focused Tom Carroll. Two-time world champion Carroll is a study in quiet intensity. I uh, feel relaxed and, um, and focusing on my surfing more than anything and I'm not bothered about uh, the outcome. I'm just I'm into my surfing at the moment and that's what I'm uh, looking for. Quarterfinal heat number four. The last remaining non-Australian, Hawaii's Derek Ho, will meet 1987 world champion and Narrabeen resident Damien Hardman. Derek Ho displays a competitive intensity of his own as he pulls into the longest barrel of the day on his first wave. But from then on, it's all Damien Hardman. Oh, I knew we got an outrageous wave in the start. It was probably the wave of the day. It was the biggest one I'd seen. And, uh, you know, I just knew I was playing catch-up from then, so I figured I'd, my best strategy would be to get a couple of sneaky ones. And I had a slow start, then I got a good little right-hand barrel, and they all come together after that. The stage is now set for an all-Australian final. Robbie Page meets Rob Bain in semi-final number one. Bain wins the heat. Tom Carroll up against Damian Hardman in semifinal number two. In this battle of world champions, Hardman will emerge victorious and meet Rob Bain in the final. In position is Damian Hardman wearing white, his opening wave. He has defeated Mike Romelsi, Ted Robinson, Derry Coe, Tom Carroll, and now he meets Rob Bain. And a great opening wave, a down-the-line cover-up, and a beautiful roundhouse snap. A beautiful wave for 24-year-old Damien Hardman from right here, North Narrabeen Beach, New South Wales, Australia, the amateur junior champion, winning that title in 1984. Opening wave now for Rob Bain, the 27-year-old from just down the beach. Big re-entry for Bainey. Rob Bain has a good contingent of fans on the beach as well. And now into the white water, scoring those extra points, those half a point. Like Damian Hardman and Bainey wearing red looking this wave over, but he doesn't have priority. He's going to keep Hardman honest, and Hardman takes off late. Hardman with a great little cover-up and a real quick little shoulder on this wave. Not much there. He gets the cover-up, two good turns, and pulls out of that wave. In fact, we have Rob Bain, his third wave. Unusual wave, a right-hander towards the river mouth. It closes out. And Bainey had hoped for a big backside cover-up. It just quite didn't pan out. He looks over his shoulder. Here's Damian Hardman now. Hardman gets a better wave. And a beautiful roundhouse cutback just about catches a rail. Here's a snappier move and a better wave, a much better wave for Damian Hardman. The 1987 world champion continues to work it, and he is building a points lead over Rob Bain from Manly. Backside attack, his third wave. We look at it one more time. It looks good right here, but then it closes out instantly, and Bainey receives only 10 points. And as the swell changes, wave selection is critical. Damian Hardman on that next wave picks up a 24-point scoring wave. Now Rob Bain out the back with priority. Looks this wave over. It is a real solid peak. Beautiful cover-up. 
Rob Bain, who's defeated Mark Sainsbury, Richie Collins, Shane Powell, and Rob Page, positions himself perfectly in this wave. And a solid barrel ride, good enough for 20 and a half points. Rob Bain versus Rob Page, both paddling out, back into position, going after that $20,000 check. Yesterday, great surfing conditions for great surfing. It was the women's final. Wendy both up versus Pam Burge, both local girls, and they both put on a great show. Here are the highlights. Wearing red, Pam Burridge, 25 years old, from Newport Beach, Australia, nine years on the tour, 10 career victories, met Wendy Botha, 24 years old, now a resident of Sydney. The former two-time and current world champion has spent five years on the tour and has amassed 15 career victories. And prior to this event, she was ranked number one on the tour, with two runner-up spots at the Coldwater Classic and at Burley Heads. 11 career victories for Pam Burridge, looking for her first one this year. Currently ranked number 9 on the ASP Tour coming into this event, Wendy missed the first event, the Coldwater Classic, due to a knee injury. Wendy patterns her moves from Martin Potter and Tom Carroll. Pam Burridge, 11 career victories. Four-time runner-up to the world titles and runner-up to Wendy Botha, but currently leading the ASP World Tour. A good contest for Pam Burridge, who defeated Jody Holmes, Michelle Donahue, and Kim Merrick. But it was Wendy Botha defeating Lane Beachley, Jenny Gill, Lisa Anderson, and Pam Burridge. Wendy Botha winning $8,000, Pam Burridge $4,000, final score 75.5 to 70.5. So Wendy Botha moves up to number six on the ASP World Tour ranking list. Pam Burridge maintains her number one position. Running, Damien Hartman's fifth wave. There's a beautiful move off the top. And a beautiful snap again. Damien Hartman, good down the line speed. Uncharacteristically again, kind of catches a rail. Unusual there. Rob Bang gets another wave and says that's not good enough to score the big points he needs. Bainey with a cover up on his fifth wave, 21.3 points. Beautiful open face. The cover up combined with a big snap and then a secondary cover up. Look at him set up. Damien Harvin's fifth wave, 19 and a half points. Two big snaps off the top. Damien Hardman, a competitive technician, intense and gets vertical. Time winding down now. This is the last wave. Rob Bain's final chance to score some points and try to take over the lead. Bainey with plenty of speed and energy. Here is Rob Bain, the 27-year-old, makes his way to the inside. The crowd goes crazy. In a duel between two locals, Rob Bain captures the prize, and this Grand Slam event now has an Aussie champion. To get through the shore break, you got to get into the lineup, and then you got to have the guts to turn around and go. January 21st, 1990 becomes a day the surfing world will never forget. In mind-boggling 20 to 30 foot surf at Hawaii's legendary Waimea Bay, the Quicksilver, a big wave specialty event held in memory of famed Hawaiian waterman Eddie Aikau, is held. This event takes competitive surfing into another realm, where skill and stamina become ingredients necessary not only for victory, but for survival as well. In winning the Quicksilver, Hawaiian Keone Downing takes the $55,000 prize, the prestige, and the memories to his own place in surfing history. But for everyone involved, the Quicksilver in memory of Eddie Aikau is well worth the three-year wait. The Odyssey takes us next to South Africa in the beautiful seaside city of Durban for the longest-running pro event, the Gunston 500. Once again, it's an all-Aussie show. 
The only non-Australian to become a quarter finalist is Tahiti Svatia David, who will settle for an equal fifth finish. And once again, Rob Bain will meet Damian Hardman in the final. But this time, Damian Hardman will win the battle and another streak will be broken. Hardman will snap a 19-month eternity without a victory. From South Africa, the Odyssey moves relentlessly on back to the west coast of the United States for two sizzling Southern California thrillers. Oceanside, California. The combatants reassemble just south of the pier in small but consistent surf for the Life's a Beach Surf Classic, a textbook example of performance surfing at its very best. features two of the flashiest, most brilliant surfers the tour has ever known. 1989 world champion Martin Potter making his presence felt profoundly after a relatively quiet tour start and Hawaiian Sonny Garcia, electrifying and absolutely aggressive. In this battle, Potts gets the taste of victory once again. But no rest for the weary. For next, it's up the coast to Surf City, Huntington Beach, California, and the largest surfing spectator event of them all, 100,000 avid fans and the OP Pro. At this famous spot that has witnessed so much surfing history through the years, a new, young generation prepares to make history of its own. live audience in the surfing world meets Brazilian rising star Flavio Potteraz, who wins quarterfinal heat number one against Sonny Garcia. Quarterfinal heat number two, and a young hopeful from Florida quietly and systematically begins an assault on the sport's top guns that will earn him a nickname, the Giant Killer. The first giant to fall in the onslaught is Martin Potter in the early rounds. John Holland, ranked 15th at the beginning of the 1990 season, continues the rebellion into the quarterfinals by taking on none other than teammate Tom Curran, who is surfing in his first event since the Australian Grand Slam.
serves with unbridled enthusiasm and reckless abandon, feeling he has nothing to lose but a great opportunity, and in so doing, incurs the most punishing wipeout of the day. quarterfinal victory over Curran is a stunner, but it's only a foreshadowing of what's to come. And it makes you try harder, and then also at the same time it's intimidating because I know when we first got out there, he got four four waves right off the bat that were next to the pier. And um, so being being Tom, I didn't know what you know what what type of maneuver he could pull off. So I didn't know really what how high of scores he was getting. Um, I think well the main reason I lost was because uh, Todd was surfing real good, um, but also I think uh, mainly it might have had to do a little bit with the board I was riding. I was riding a, a six nine, and so it was maybe a little bit long for those waves and um, it's just a matter of uh, you know I really need to get the, the good better waves and the heat to, to win and uh, and I, I was just kind of even with Todd I guess pretty much through the heat and he had the higher scoring waves uh, mainly it's just that he uh, was surfing real good. Quarterfinal heat number three. Three-time U.S. champion Mike Lambrizi meets Hawaii's Marty Thomas and Thomas knocks him off with his own onslaught. Heat number four, Gunston 500 winner Damian Hardman, now on a hot streak, meets Brad Gerlach and almost the Huntington Beach Pier. Despite an outstanding display of surfing from Brad Gerlach, Hardman's performance is flawless and aggressive, and he moves on. There's a break in the action while the Way Boyers continue to paddle back out. And while they do, let's take a look back at the women's finals. You know, Peter, the women pull off all the same moves that the men do nowadays. Well, it's incredible. Frida Zamba and Wendy both of them. They're both excellent surfers. And even in these bigger conditions here in Huntington, they've just been doing incredible maneuvers. Frida Zamba, by the way, going for her fourth OP title. Nobody has ever won four. So let's take a look back on the women's finals. <laughs> So, the surf arena and center stage turned over to the ladies as thousands of spectators looked on. The two champions fighting hard for the OP Pro Surfing title. Frida Zampa, her first wave, a little less than she had hoped for. Well, she might have been a little nervous uh, going for four, set the all-time record, and the backwash played havoc with her on that first opening ride. Well, meanwhile, Wendy Botha got off to a good start, scoring 20 points on this wave. Well, it was a good, strong ride, and she got to uh, do a couple of good moves on the inside. You can see she's got a hefty-looking knee brace on there, and uh, she'd been recovering from an early uh, injury that started off the season. Frida got back on track in a hurry. Her next wave earned her 20.5 points. Well, she got some good outside action, and this wave really cooperated because it came to the inside and uh, reformed up, allowing her to get a couple of extra moves in, and she was really looking good here for possibly winning her fourth OP Pro title. Nobody, man or woman, has ever won four titles here at the OP Surfing Championship, not to mention at stake for the women is a first prize check for three thousand five hundred dollars. Well, that was a great crisp move outside from Frieda, and as the uh, heat wore on, the girl started to pick up the pace here. Wendy Botha tried to go for the big floater there, and she couldn't get it back down. Well, Frieda Zamba also trying to go for the big maneuver, and tries to floater, and loses her balance, and she goes down in the whitewater, too.
deal. Well, things got worse for Wendy Botha. She just wasn't getting it together as she bails out there. But in the meantime, Frida Zamba refocused. This is her highest scoring wave, 22 points. She wins it going away with a score of 101.5 to Wendy Botha's 87.0. Marty Collins paddling for the first wave. He's taking the drop. He goes on his back end. He goes up nice off the top there. Comes around this section. Rips it off the top there as that wave closes out. And two good strong moves outside from Todd Holland on his opening wave. Now he's got the white water. Can he get any green face on the inside? A little rebound off the white water. Another floater over the white water there. Well, great white water maneuvers on the inside, Mike. Well, the thing is, his first wave is now. Well, here's a look at that wave from the water. You can see he gets that first move off the bottom. Then he comes around this section. And this is the move that scores the big points right there. But here's Marty Thomas, opening wave. Let's see. He needs a good score. Here he goes. Drops down to the bottom. Comes off the bottom. Rips it upside down there outside. Comes around this section again. Upside down in the white water again. Two good moves from outside. Answering right back. Todd Holland's opening wave at 22.5. Oh, I've got to see whether Marty Thomas can get something going on the inside. A little floater over the white water. Thomas has had the best score of the heat to this point. Now we've got a little cat and mouse going on. Todd Holland knows he's in front. And he lets Marty Thomas go on this little one here. He's seventh. Marty gets a little off the top there. But uh, this wave isn't enough, Mike Chamberlain. You've got to have more than this if you're going to overcome a deficit that he's facing right now. Todd Holland has a pretty decent lead, even though this wave's shaping up pretty nicely inside for him. He didn't really get the big move outside, but a good move on the inside there from Marty Thomas. But right behind him, Todd Holland. I tell you, he's been on his heels all day long, and here's the other part of the cat and mouse show. We know that Marty Thomas has some makeup, some catch-up to do. Meanwhile, Todd Holland continues to free surf unbelievably here, up and down the white water, working every inch of the ocean over, and this kid is well on his way right now to his first ever professional title and a paycheck of $10,000. Well, you can't win anyone better than the OP Pro if you're going to win one for your first professional. Here's Todd Holland bringing it all the way up onto the sand, dives <laughs> up into the water. You can tell he's feeling victorious here today at the OP Pro Championship in Huntington. Look at him. He's a real excited young boy. He's going to take his surf leash off as the crowd comes to their feet. A standing ovation for Todd Holland. Martin Potter, Tom Curran, Flavio Potterotz, and Marty Thomas. After a hard day's giant killing, Todd Holland still had enough left to hoist the trophy. The summer moves on and so do the pros. Now to Europe and the southwest coast of France for the Quicksilver Lacanau Pro. The quarterfinals feature another Curran-Holland matchup. Holland still flushed with his OP Pro victory, still surfing like a giant killer. Surfing now in his adopted home country of France, fights off the Holland Challenge to win quarterfinal number one. Quarterfinal number two is a battle of the old guard versus the new. The surfer of the 80s, two-time world champion Tom Carroll, clearly demonstrating that like a good French wine, he just gets better as time goes by. His opponent in the heat is a young surfer appearing in only his third professional event. Floridian Kelly Slater's raw talent is abundant and evident, and his moves reflect the ever-changing nature of performance surfing. Their heat is a battle royal. This time, the young talent triumphs. Kelly Slater captures the heat and media attention and moves on. Though immensely gifted as a surfer, Slater is aware of his inexperience on the tour. Well, I'd say the weakest part is probably my experience with the buoy and using um, like interference rules and stuff like that. I really haven't learned too much about it yet. Um, but I try to do my best. I think I know enough to not get in a problem, not get in a hassle. Um, I really wouldn't 
say what my best best aspect of my surfing is. I don't know. Yesterday I scored the highest score of the day, so um, you know I guess I was doing good. I'll just keep trying to do the same thing. Quarterfinal number three is yet another old guard versus young lion battle with Australia's tour veteran Shane Horan meeting Californian Richie Collins. Horan's more traditional tactic of looking for the tubes proves inadequate against the flamboyant Collins wide open, anything goes attack. Collins' uninhibited performance moves him on and through the competition. Quarterfinal number four features yet another master and world champion, Australian Barton Lynch, up against yet another young, aggressive challenger, Brazil's Flavio Paterutz, nurturing a hot streak of his own. Paterutz, basking in the new glow of international attention, offers his best with no holds barred enthusiasm and puts Lynch back on the beach for the day. The semifinals are abundant with incredible surfing action. The highly anticipated confrontation between the gifted Kelly Slater and his own surfing idol Tom Curran. For Slater, the flash and fire are not enough to overcome the current experience and consistency. Curran has a few gifts of his own. And the collins potterods matchup. Flavio is brilliant, but Richie is ablaze, placing himself against the resurgent Tom Curran in the final. Collins trying to find some open face and power on this wave. There was a good backhand snap. Once again, asking his way to the inside, trying to throw up a wall of whitewater. Collins, runner-up last year's Lackanau Pro, being defeated by Martin Potter in the finals. This time he's up against Tom Curran. All the way to the inside. Collins now, not much of a wave to the inside. 18.5 points. Judges coming up with their scores immediately when he makes his way to the inside. The crowd right now, enthusiastic over Tom Curran surfing. This entire event, he began last Tuesday in the trials and has made it here to the finals on Sunday. Great surfing, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Now the conditions, not the best, but very contestable. Tom getting some good combination moves to the south end of the beach, away from the priority buoys. Gutsy re-entry right onto the sand. Great dismount for Tom Curran. And he is no doubt the most popular surfer in France and the most popular surfer in the world. Tom Curran's second wave scores, 18.5. And as our two finalists paddle back out, let's take a look at highlights of the women's final. Pam Burridge versus Wendy Botha. Pam Burridge, 25 years old, out of Newport Beach, New South Wales, Australia. The 10-year pro, four-time runner-up to the world crown, is currently ranked number one on the tour. And Pam is going for the big moves. But going for the bigger moves was Wendy Botha, 24 years old, out of Sydney, Australia, looking for a big win here. Her birthday coming up in just three days. All year long, it's been consistency for Pam Burridge. Three runner-up spots and one win at Oceanside has put her number one in the ranking. But in order to win this event, she was going to have to pull off those big moves. And the big moves were pulled off by Wendy Botha. Wendy, with 16 ASP career victories, will celebrate her 25th birthday with a record 17 career victories, winning the Quicksilver Lackanau Pro Women's Event. Now back to the men's main event in progress. While we are away, Richie Collins did get a third scoring wave, a 16.0, totaling 52 points. He is in the lead right now. Here's Tom Curran, his third scoring wave. Big outside move, good vertical snap. Tom Curran to the south end of the beach, away from Richie Collins, away from the priority buoy, and finding waves on a different sandbar. All the way to the inside. And the big moves have been the inside moves. And he's got to do the Huntington hop to get to the inside. There's the backside re-entry right onto the beach. And he steps off the board one more time. Applause from the crowd. They love Tom Curran here. Scores coming in. 23 points for Tom's third wave. Here's Richie Collins on his fourth scoring wave. And the sandbar where Richie Collins is surfing, really not offering a powerful wave or any down-the-line surfing. He gets one big vertical snap, a backside snap out the back, 
and going to hop and weave his way to the inside. Now into the short break. And he bails off. Enthusiastic fans, give him a hand. Let's take a look. Richie Collins scoring 18 points, and this is why he got it. That one vertical snap, backside re-entry. Here's Tom Curran now. Tom's fourth wave. And it's a small left to the outside. Two flashy moves, trying to throw up a wall of water, generating speed. Three small combination moves out the back. Now he's going to hop, try to stay with this wave as it reforms to the inside. Backside 360, right under the beach. And Tom Curran with a beautiful dismount. No time for our two surfers to make it into the lineup. Time is running down. Our finals complete here in the 11th round. And yet another battle has been fought and won by a man who has thus far surfed in six tour events and won four of them. The Odyssey takes them south to Biarritz, France, and the Arena Surfmasters. This is the coastal town that Tom Curran now calls home, and his local knowledge once again catapults him into the final against his Bells Beach adversary, Australian Dave McCauley. The surfing world is beginning to sense history in the making as Curran captures victory number five. And then it's the Biondi Pro in Portugal for the last leg of the tour's European swing. The Pucas Pro and Sealand Pro events in Spain have preceded this event with Spanish surnamed Sonny Garcia capturing both victories. But Portugal brings Holland and Curran head to head once again in the Biondi final. <laughs> And the resulting sixth victory all that locks up the tour lead for Tom Curran. From Europe, like latter-day Marco Polos, the surfers trek to the Orient and the island nation of Japan for the Marui Pro. Once again, Tom Curran and Richie Collins go head-to-head -head in the final. Curran's seventh victory of 1990 becomes his fifth career Marui Pro Championship. After a two-event swing through Brazil, once again the tour plunges south to the land down under. The most awesome surf to be encountered since the Waimea Bay event awaits them at Western Australia's Margaret River and the Drug Offensive Masters. Once again, the test is of skill and survival. Final stars Barton Lynch in the process of mounting a late season charge up the ratings, matched up against young Californian Jeff Booth, who has himself been gaining a reputation as a master of big waves. But it's Barton Lynch who masters Margaret River. Heading east to Newcastle, New South Wales for the BHP Steel International. The weary travelers face yet more challenges, but it will be a six-year pro veteran, Mike Parsons, with no career wins to his credit, paired against an Aussie world champion, Barton Lynch, in the BHP final. An inspired performance will end Mike Parsons' seven-year quest for a tour victory once and for all. The Odyssey is nearing its end. The final three events of the 1990 ASP World Tour, the Triple Crown of Surfing, will take place appropriately in Hawaii, the birthplace of surfing itself. Three of Hawaii's most famous breaks, Haleiwa, Banzai Pipeline, and Sunset Beach, will host the Triple Crown events, which will be dedicated this year to the memory of a brave young Hawaiian surfer who recently passed away, Ronnie Burns. Ronnie Burns was himself a finalist in the 1989 Marui Pipeline Masters, a master in his own right of the greatest surf breaks in the world.
The World Cup of Surfing, the first jewel in the three-event Triple Crown, commences at Haleiwa on the North Shore, and now the final chapters of the 1990 Odyssey will be written. Tom Curran still maintains a sizable tour lead, but it's not insurmountable. Indeed, late season rallies by the likes of Gary Elkerton and Barton Lynch have put them within striking distance of the leader. If Curran wants the world title, he'll have to win it in Hawaii. But it will not happen at the World Cup. four-man final will pit Hawaiian Derek Ho, a three-time Triple Crown champion, against the Australian trio of Gary Elkerton, Barton Lynch, and Luke Egan. The Aussies will be superb, but the Hawaiian will be a powerhouse. of the final three battles. And then, the wave of all waves, the true proving grounds of the sport, the unforgiving, unforgettable, unbelievable barrels of the Bonsai Pipeline and the Marui Pipeline Masters, the second jewel in the crown. Within reach of the world title, Gary Elkerton momentarily has his hopes dashed against the pipeline's deadly reef, sustaining an arm laceration that will force him out of the competition at the quarterfinal level. But others will continue the fight. Yet again, an early round defeat will keep the elusive world championship from Tom Curran's grasp. Time is running out for Curran, but to Ross Clark Jones, Richard Marsh, Tom Carroll, and Jeff Booth, the final of the Pipe Masters will seem an eternity.
after a season of knocking on the door, Tom Carroll's second Pipeline Masters victory is well worth the wait. Held in conjunction with the third Triple Crown event, the Billabong Pro, is the final stop on the 1990 Women's World Tour, the Underwets Women's Pro. A storm-soaked Sunset Beach is the site. The surf is huge, and in a four-woman All-Australian final, featuring Jody Cooper, Pam Burridge, Pauline Menzer, and Tony Sawyer, Pam Burridge's 10-year odyssey of near misses and second-place title finishes comes to a triumphant end at last. defends the event title she won in 1989 and clinches her first women's world championship, capping a brilliant four-victory season and an inspiring 10-year career. And finally, the Billabong Pro, the third jewel in the Triple Crown, the end of the Odyssey. In the quarterfinals, Martin Potter. Gary Elkerton, his pipeline injury no deterrent to an excellent performance. Derek Ho, the leader in the Triple Crown Series Championship, looking at an unprecedented fourth Triple Crown title. Curran, shaking off his Hawaiian paralysis and returning to championship form, finally bowing out in this heat. Tahiti's Vatea David, putting on a splendid performance. Hero and 1989 semifinalist in the Billabong Pro, Mike Latronic. The final four men to surf in the 1990 season are two Americans and two Australians Mike Latronic and Hans Hiedemann from Hawaii. Nikki Wood and Tony Ray from Newcastle and Torquay, Australia, respectively. Nikki Wood, 20 years old, four years on the tour, 
winning $40,000 in his third career victory. Nicky Wood wins the final battle of 1990. But Tom Curran wins the war. For four years, the Association of Surfing Professionals has sponsored a pro longboard tour, hearkening back to an earlier era with a different style, different equipment, different stars, but the same competitive attitude. Appropriately, many of the stars of yesterday are the stars of today's longboard tour. Among them, names like Stuart Entwistle and Mark Ravage. But foremost is the current world champion and a bona fide surfing legend, the irrepressible Nat Young. He helped change the face of surfing in the 60s. In the 90s, the title of longboard world champion seems almost a birthright. Yet no one can deny that to the sport of surfing, Nat Young still typifies the true soul surfer in every respect. the many outstanding performances and performers during the 1990 Women's Pro Tour, certain individuals merit special recognition. Among them, four-time women's world champion Frida Zamba. In 1990, she chose semi-retirement, appearing in only two major tour events. At the O'Neill Coldwater Classic Women's event, she met Pam Burridge in the final. She won. At the OP Pro, she battled Wendy Botha. She won. Two out of two ain't bad. Floridian Lisa Anderson was another standout. She took the 1990 Bundaberg event from Pam Burridge and the quit women's pro at Bells Beach, defeating Kim Meerig. Two consecutive victories. She finished fourth in 1990. Australia's Wendy Botha, the 1989 world champion who, despite a severe knee injury, still captured four tour victories in 1990 and is the all-time leader in event victories, contest earnings, and championship heat winning percentages. She finished second in 1990. Australia's Pam Burridge. She won the world championship in 1990 with four tour victories and four second place finishes. Won 34 of 44 heats, surpassed $100,000 in career earnings, and made it a record 10 seasons in the top eight pro women. Australia's Jody Cooper. 1990 saw her win the Marui Pro and finish second in the Drug Offensive Pro and Underwet's Women's Pro. She reached the top four for the seventh straight season and became third on the all-time prize money list. Congratulations to the top women pros of 1990 and especially to our new world champion, Pam Burridge. And now let's meet the men who made the Odyssey, fought the battles, and finished as the top 16 in the world.
we pay tribute to this year's best of the best. After a year's semi-retirement to become a family man, beginning the season ranked 55th, surfing through the trials in 10 events, winning three of them, and ultimately finishing the year with seven victories, Tom Curran became the 1990 ASP World Champion, his third such title. Only Australian Mark Richards has won more. After an incredible year of phenomenal surfing, the winningest professional surfer of all time, the all-time leading money winner, the soft-spoken California native, could once again survey the surfing world from the top of the mountain. and respect to the 1990 ASP world champion Tom Curran, whose own odyssey was a comeback trail. It's been a magic year for me. I've been really, really stoked.